I want you to open up your Bible and uh, open up your phone. If you're watching us on live or re-watching the service, I want you to pull out your phone and I want you to go to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2 verse 15 and as you do so, I'm just going to give a little advertisement. Uh, we just have released a single Ready to Mingle book. Yeah. <clears throat> and so uh, the book is uh, officially out on Amazon. It's going to be in here on Sunday but on Amazon it's way cheaper so then it's going to be here on Sunday and if you have Kindle it's for free on Kindle it's on the Version Bible app as well so Genesis chapter 2 and verse 15 if you're there say amen. amen and if you did not bring your Bible and your phone does not have enough space and so you had to delete the Bible app God forgive you but we got you covered we're gonna read on the count of three on the screen behind me so one two three Okay, chapter 2, verse 18. Let's read verse 18. One, two, three. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. And chapter 2, verse 20, 21, and 20, 20, 21, and 22. On the count of three. One, two, three. So Adam gave names to all cattle to the birds of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helper comparable to him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam and he slept. He, he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman and he brought her to the man. Somebody say amen. amen. So in this just enough verses we just found out where all the women came from and we just found out God's blueprint and so every every person place your hand on your rib. I'm just kidding. Uh, place your hand up on your heart. I want you to say this with me. Say Lord Jesus open my heart to your word. Lord Jesus open my heart to your spirit. Lord Jesus Open my heart to your faith. Amen. Amen. Give somebody a high five as you take your seat in the presence of Jesus. Amen. 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 I do understand that most people sitting in front of me today are younger and it's not your time maybe to mingle. Um, in that way people watching and there's some young adults college young professionals that are sitting here as well and so we're going to try to tailor it to uh, to every group um, of people i wanted to let you know that bible has a lot of bad examples of how to be single and ready to mingle when somebody says how do you find a spouse according to the bible it actually has a lot of bad examples like one of the guys for example worked for seven years and part of his working contract was that he's going to marry a wife except he didn't read the small print what it says he'll marry the firstborn not the secondborn and he liked the secondborn. One guy in fact bought a real estate property Boaz and wife came as part of the deal. Very expensive property. Another dude went to war and killed 150 people and he had to cut certain parts of their body that I'm not going to mention here and that's how he got a wife. If you do that according to the Bible you will end up in jail. So that's not one guy just simply what he did he was a king and he made peace treaty with every country and every country he made peace treaty with he got a woman as a package. So he just married all of them. So if somebody says you know uh, date like the Bible says don't. Like find a spouse like the Bible says don't because you will be put into jail and that is going to be immoral and that is going to be wrong and so what, what do we what do we learn from now if, if you come into any kind of household your parents tell you the way we did it is the way you should do it like all of our parents have really crazy stories like my, my mom and my dad my dad met my mom and two months later they were married my dad did not actually know who my mom was to that point a few days before the wedding he came to the house he confused my mom with her sister he kept on talking to her and, and like, like about the wedding plans and she's like, dude, that, that's not me. You're married the other one. And so my dad could be like, dude, lad, don't worry about it, man. Just, uh, just marry them. And if you confuse the sisters, you're going to end up with some kind of a sister. So my dad is not an example of how to get it done. Nor am I an example because I used Facebook. I used the mouse to find a spouse. 
and for most people that's not how it's gonna work and stuff I found a, a person well my wife found me on Facebook and uh, she added me as a friend on Facebook and uh, she initiated that and at the time I was single so I was ready to to mingle and I was scrolled through her photos and I liked what I saw and it wasn't sinful at the time because I was single and so I scrolled through her photos and I was like wow you know where where's this woman from and then I found out that she's from Vancouver Washington the church that I would go to a lot and preach and I was like how did God blind my eyes that I was there so many years I never saw her and so next time that I was invited I said Lord my eyes are open I am ready <laughs> speak to your servant and uh, I preached powerful sermon but in reality from the first word that I said I was honestly looking for her and then I found her in the second pew she was sitting there and after that my sermon would just went down the hill from there and then right after the service I came up to her and and I was asking her how she, how she enjoyed the sermon that I was distracted and I was like hey how, how did you like my sermon I was really stalking her because she was trying to get coffee and I stood right behind her she she went somewhere else and I happened to be right behind her again and uh, it, it's, it's not easy when you're a preacher and you're a little bit known to um, uh, to connect with somebody to cut the story short a few months later we were engaged uh, and then some months later we were married I was 24 when I got married and if I would have do it again I would just do it faster <laughs> I would just save money on gas because there's a lot of driving back and forth and uh, and sooner or later no matter uh, for me I believe who you marry you're still gonna have to deal with your stuff and you're still gonna have to learn to be unselfish and to be kind so who is our example when it comes to relationships I believe the example for us is, is not me even though I have certain things that I believe everybody should follow the example is not even our parents even though your parents might be a great example some of you here you don't have a good example from your parents when Pharisees came to Jesus and they, they said Jesus um, Moses said we should divorce that's what the law says and Jesus told them this he says in the beginning somebody say in the beginning, in the beginning. come on somebody say in the beginning in the Jesus says in the beginning it was not so. In the beginning he's referring to the first two chapters of Genesis. The first two chapters of Genesis is God's perfect plan I believe for the humanity and the last two chapters of Revelation is God restoring that perfect plan and everything in between is a mess and then there's Jesus there reconciling us and bringing us back to God's perfect plan. So what we're going to do today is I'm just going to jump in quickly and share with you three simple principles of from the beginning when God created relationships. Let me remind you, God created Adam and when he created Adam, after that God revealed himself to Adam. Adam had a relationship with God and after that relationship with God, Adam also had a job. Adam's job was very simple. He was taking care of the garden so it wasn't anything too fancy. It wasn't like he was you know rolling in dough and you know driving really fancy cars and, and wearing designer shoes and all of this stuff. Hey, Adam had a landscaping business. He was taking care of the garden. He was trimming the trees, mowing the lawn, taking care of the sprinklers and then everything goes, goes well. He slept there. He didn't have to buy clothes because they were naked. There was no stores available anywhere. He didn't have to pay for his cell phone because at and didn't exist at the time. Apple didn't exist. And so Adam's life was very, very simple. He couldn't compare himself to nobody because there was nobody there. But Adam had a relationship with God and Adam had a J-O-B. Adam had a job. I always tell people first and the most important thing as a single person you must know is this is you have to have a relationship with God. Somebody say amen. amen. But the second thing after you have a relationship with God whether you're a teenager or a young adult before you even think about relationship you have to have a job. No money, no honey. Come somebody say amen. All right you can't take her out on a date with your mom's credit card. All right. And you can't go on a date and say, hey honey, I forgot my wallet. Could, could, you, could you cover me? Or hey, could you, could you cover up for me? That, that, is, that is not how this works. God from the beginning established this. That every guy, and I believe also this applies for ladies. Because ladies, we should not, be, should not be waiting for a sugar daddy who's going to supply all of your needs according to his riches and his glory. You can work. You can have a job as well. And, and you can succeed in that area. Can somebody say amen? And then something happens when Adam gets a job God begins to come to Adam and this is what we read in verse 15. God says to Adam it is not good for a man to be alone let us make somebody for him. I want to let you know something in here. Watch this. Adam did not come to God and say God I am lonely send me a girlfriend. Adam did not come to God and say God there's nothing to do and I am bored. Give me somebody to like. Adam was so lost in God. He actually 
was so engulfed with God that God had to come to Adam and say Adam you're lonely I believe Adam replied back what does that mean like what, what does it mean I'm lonely God me and you go on these walks every single day you speak to me in the whisper of the day you're still small voice I'm trimming the trees calling out naming the animals God I'm having a blast what do you mean I'm lonely are you, are, God, are, are you trying to get rid of me like are you not enjoying the talks that we have and all this stuff God I don't understand what is the agenda behind this I'm lonely see if you're coming to God and telling God you're lonely you still need God to fix that loneliness but God wants to satisfy you so much that it has to be God that will remind you hey it's your time see some of you come on some people are 16 years of age God send me a girlfriend and God goes in there you need deliverance not a date you need a rehab not romance you need to find God and be lost in him so much that God will be the one say hey come on it's your time but see come on some of us guys some of us have a fear if I go deep in God God the more you get to know him becomes this controlling jealous boyfriend it's like only you belong to me and nobody else God forbid you have feelings for somebody I kill them kill them like this I'll bring you to a freedom weekend and cut it out like this see some of you think that God is a jealous God in regards to relationships he's not it was his idea to tell Adam you're single and you're ready to mingle you gotta go bro and I believe Adam's like God I'm having a blast if you're lonely if you are broken needy hurting bleeding bored relationship you will not go into it because of love you will go into it because of a need so you don't go there to give love you go there because you're hurting and typically what usually happens we end up attracting the very thing we are we end up attracting exactly the same broken person as we are and next thing that happens is two broken people get together and we have a big big broken mess dating is not where you find love dating is where you're supposed to share love where you find love is in the relationship with God is in intimacy with God where you discover who you are is in intimacy with God God wants you to delight yourself in him so he will fulfill the desires of your heart God wants you to get so lost in him that honestly you have to the other person has to look for God to find you God wants you to get so rooted in him and so found in him that the other person has to look for God to find you come on somebody give God some praise right now God does not want to take things from you. He wants to prepare you for things. Write this down if you are taking notes. The first point is that you are ready to date when you don't need to. When you don't need to. As long as there is a need. I need. Why? Because I don't know man. It's just, it's just, just life is not, is not everybody is dating around me and my biological clock has ticked and I need to. Why? Because I don't feel like I'm successful. No, 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 no. My friend, find yourself in God. Like Adam did. The God comes to Adam and says, Adam, come on bro. It's your time. I believe that many people, I wrote this book and I titled it Single ready to mingle. The word single in the original language means whole, unique, one. The problem with many people is they're not single. See you're not single because you're not dating. You're single because you're whole. You're not single because you're not married. You're single because you're whole. The more single you become the more ready you are to mingle. In fact, even when you get married, the more single you stay, the better chances your relationships will get better. 
singleness is the hope to this generation being single means being whole being single means complete being single being meaning being unique being single means you you know who you are being single means you're not broken being single means you're not shattered being single means you are restored being single means you are free the problem with many people is they're mingling and they're not single there's not whole of them what's what's given what they give of themselves is only 80 percent because 10 percent the guy who abused them before he's taken that the other 10 percent was taken by by the fact that there was no father in a home or broken family environment the other 10 percent was taken by the fact that they looked at themselves in the mirror and they say i don't like the way i look and so when they actually come into a relationship they're mingling but in reality they're not truly single they're not truly whole and that's exactly why those relationships don't work why because when you're not whole you're like a bleeding person that is going into the sea full of sharks hoping to have fun you always end up somebody's lunch People say, why, why is these bad people always attracted to me? Sharks smell blood. There are evil people in this world and they smell. A lot of times you could see even, even people among us, and I'm not going to point fingers at anybody or call anybody out. That was Paola's job last week. <laughs> Did an amazing job. <laughs> we were watching live stream and we were like, I hope she's not going to call anybody out on the live stream. <laughs> you there. But sometimes I watch young guys or young girls the way they dress the kind of attention that they seek and you know it's not because they want to it's because they're hurting and next thing that happens is the kind of guys they get the kind of things they get eventually they're like man I always get heartbroken I always hard I always get you know these people who leave me wounded I said well you know if you stop putting out the bait you will stop attracting those things but the reason why we put out that bait is because we are hurting it's not because we want to act this way it's because we grew up without a father or maybe we, we've been abused before or maybe we feel very insecure and so I want to tell you something that God first wants us to find wholeness in Him if you're taking notes write this down relationship with God will make you whole all relationships will reveal your holes every relationship in your life will actually expose the holes that you got only one relationship will make you whole if I hear another young person says he makes me whole to me it's a first sign they're broken <laughs> if she makes you whole that means you messed up you gotta walk in already I am whole he God makes me whole and the other person walks in and guess what happens when you whole you don't have to settle for anything or anybody who has lust problem who has control the problem who has manipulating problem you don't have to send your nudes you don't have to sex you don't have to give yourself away too cheaply why because you know that you don't need them to be you you are you by yourself you found yourself in God I know it's sexy, I know it's romantic, I know it sounds cute on Instagram. He makes me whole, he completes me. All of that stuff is junk. It just simply means you're infatuated, you're drunk with infatuation and the same God who makes you whole then begins to stalk all of your friends and send all kinds of bad stuff about you and destroy your reputation. Why? Because if you give somebody a power to make you whole, they'll break you down. I walk into a relationship knowing one thing there's only one person in this world who has a relationship to make me whole and to break me to pieces and that person is the one who died on the cross for me and so when I come into marriage when I come into dating I don't come to get whole I come to be blessed I come to bless I come to love I come to bless why they don't have the power to heal me and they don't have the power to hurt me why because I am whole by God come on somebody but you must understand no matter how whole you get, every person in this room has gotten some holes. The holes are the things, your attitude when you, one of your siblings is getting ready. The holes is, is when somebody cuts you off, maybe you're driving. The holes maybe when the manager you know, pulls you on that shift on the 4th of July and asks you to work and you have a barbecue to go to and you're like, Aah! that's a hole. 
for some of you the hole is is maybe the fact that you know you, you're addicted to something that's that's a hole and a lot of times when you get into a relationship you, you recognize you're perfect but then they begin to reveal your holes and so in many people of course they're like oh my god I made a wrong decision and no you didn't make a wrong decision you've had these holes all of your life your mama told you you had these holes your brother told you you had these holes your pastor told you you got these holes your youth group leader told you you got these holes but you always said it's not your fault and now you got somebody in your nose saying you know what you got to deal with that or we're gonna have problems and God's like finally I got to him marriage is not meant to make you happy it's first meant to make you holy <laughs> and if it doesn't make you holy it'll make you miserable but if it makes you holy it will make you happy every other relationship is not going to make you whole temporarily it will make you the feeling he's so perfect and then three months later you find out he's so perverted <laughs> oh wow from perfect to perverted man he makes me feel so beautiful and just three weeks later I'm sick of him why anytime you give somebody a power to make you whole they'll just show your world like Thanos all right <laughs> only relate write this down relationship with God satisfies all other relationships magnify every relationship in your life including the relationship that you will have with other people will magnify who you are only relationship with God will satisfy somebody say satisfy somebody say magnify God satisfies relationships magnified if you are satisfied in God when other person walks into your life they'll magnify that satisfaction for example if you're a young lady and you know that you're beautiful because your dad told you you're beautiful because God told you you're beautiful next thing that happens another person another man will walk into your life at the right time and this is what's going to happen they will magnify what you already know about yourself but if you walk around knowing that you're ugly if you walk around you feel that you're worthless nobody will love you and this is what typically happens somehow some way in this crazy universe you tend to attract people exactly the same who after about two three months begin to tell you exactly the same thing you've been telling yourself for 20 years and people say why am I attracting that kind of a thing because see what you believe about yourself is a magnet that attracts exactly the same thing if you are lonely you begin to attract more loneliness if you are sad you begin to attract more sadness and so I want to challenge you today to get in the face with God begin to find a relationship with Jesus where he can satisfy you and then God will bring other people who will magnify you who will magnify what you got inside they will make it more like that if you if you are broke as a single person can I give you a secret no man will ever fix your financial problems it's like that woman who, who uh, married a man and uh, she was bragging about that he was a millionaire. They asked him, who was he before you met him? She was like, he was a billionaire. <laughs> he was a billionaire before I met him. Because when you're broke, you get married, you become more broke. But if you know how to manage finances, if you know how to manage your emotions, if you know how to manage your time, you get married, that begins to grow you have an intimacy with God you have a devotional life even though you're in school even though you're in work you still find time to read the Word of God this is crazy how it happens you get married and you find out your relationship with God actually grows somebody else gets married and you find out they don't have any relationship with God at all why because they've never had a relationship with God to start with marriage doesn't change you it only reveals and magnifies what you already got inside you got anger it's just going to be more of anger you got sadness it's going to be more of sadness you got depression marriage won't fix it if marriage would fix depression if marriage would fix lust some people some guys are like man I struggle with porn I just need to get married so I can have free sex you're crazy marriage is not going to deliver you if marriage will be a deliverer God wouldn't send Jesus Christ to die on the cross for you he will send marriage to die on the cross for you marriage doesn't deliver guys God delivers people repentance delivers people renouncing things delivers people freedom weekend delivers people come on somebody are you with me without devotional life we will seek out of dating what only can be found in deliverance without devotional life we will seek out of dating what only can be found in deliverance 
I believe if you don't have a walk with God your romantic relationship mark my words I know some of you and I'm looking over you it's going through your thick skull right now it's completely fine I will still be here when you will be broken and heartbroken and you will cry but I'm gonna tell you this I've seen this 16 years being in youth ministry I've seen this all over the place romance becomes a rehab when you don't have an intimacy with God and you see a poor girl helping a guy to get over his cheating problem and because she's so insecure instead of dropping him like a hot potato she's literally babysitting that dude who literally needs rehab or you see a, a guy same thing put, putting up with the girl who literally has a spirit of a Jezebel she needs deliverance not a date but the reason why he's putting up with her because she's so good looking the Bible says a good-looking woman without her brains is a pig with a golden nose ring. Home slice, you're dating a pig. The homegirl is, is a witch. She's a manipulative, controlling freak. The fact that she looks great, it doesn't mean anything. But why we do that? Because without the relationship with God, we don't have the confidence to say, you know what, no, no, that is not right for me. I know you're hot, but hell is hot too. And I don't want to be with hell. Oh, but he's so fine. You see the BMW that he drives, you know, he's just, he's so fine. Those biceps and the triceps, did you see that? Do you see his hair? I mean, he even, he, he even does his eyelashes and he, he goes waxing and everything. I just, I know he has a porn addiction. I know he sleeps with anything that moves, but we can change that. No, 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 no. If you don't have an intimacy with God, you will turn, you will make out of your relationship a rehab. I can't tell you how many people, even this week, I met with for 13 years, 12 years, are not in a marriage. They're in a rehab program. And the other spouse keeps retaking the same classes every single year and can't graduate. <laughs> And they're sucking their life out. People literally who were telling me, I tried to end my life already. Why? Because this rehab sucks. Marriage was supposed to be a place of love. That's what they were expecting. Instead, it became a prison sentence. God doesn't want it to be for you. But it will happen and you will never be able to see differentiation between love and lust if you don't have an intimacy with God. Intimacy with God gives you protection. Intimacy with God lets the weirdo stay away from you and you to smell where the weirdo is coming saying, you know what? Hit the road, Jack. <laughs> I'm not, uh, I, I, I protected my purity for 12 years, not so I can live in the, in the rehab in my romance. No, 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 no. That's, that's not, I prayed, I fasted, not so that I can just have a, a, a good looking guy. I need a good man with some good morals, with the head screwed on his shoulder with his heart in his right place and somebody who uses his hands to pick up groceries not to slap me somebody who's not a player but somebody who's a priest in the house somebody who knows how to pray somebody who knows how to read the bible not just somebody who's always on his phone but somebody who's always connected to God and so you begin to know that why because you, you you're in the relationship with God because somebody say amen I want you to see that Adam, he, he spends time with God and then God comes to Adam and says, Adam, you need to get married. And Adam's like, oh, married what? I mean, I've never seen that happen, God. Because see, he was so lost in God that God had to tell him that, hey, you, you need somebody in your life. And so Adam says, well, okay, God, what do you want me to do? And the scripture says, we read that Adam was naming animals, but it was not found. Somebody say found. found. Come on, somebody say found. found. The word found indicates somebody was looking, correct? So when somebody says found, or not found meaning somebody was looking if 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 i send you say could you could you find my keys and you come back and say i didn't find your keys means you were again so that means that while adam is naming animals giraffe elephant snake hyena lion adam is looking naming and looking have you ever done two things at the same time so adam is naming and at the same time looking i think he's imagining he's like if we end up together you know, <laughs> elephant. Woo. He looked at the rattlesnake. <sighs> How the kids will turn out. My God, have mercy. <laughs> and then there she was a monkey. <laughs> Glorious. A little bit too, too much here, but there's nothing God cannot do. My God is the God of impossible. 
laser surgery hair removing surgery my God is the God of miracles there she was the only thing that was as close to a human as a man has ever seen and I'm pretty sure Adam was like you know what not the best choice but you know with a little bit of discipline surgery and some miracle working power of God we can make this work watch this Adam doesn't come to God and say God look what I found <laughs> could you um, do a little tune-up a little fixing oil change change the tires <laughs> kind of do the whole uh, you know you know that Adam actually had no other options there was nobody else around it's not like Adam could go to Mars and find somebody there there was nobody around Adam should have settled for a monkey because nobody else was around instead of Adam came back to God with his head and said God I looked everywhere I found something that you could work on but um I decided that I don't want to bring you someone to work on I want you to bring someone to me you've been working on before God brings you an Eve devil will offer you a monkey come on that's good preaching right there somebody say amen before God brings you an Eve see I want you to watch this God didn't go and put Adam to sleep right away and say hey here's your wife God actually sends him to search because he wants the generation after Adam to know that before God brings someone to you you are will be tempted to bring someone to God for God to fix pastor this is my boyfriend he just has a big anger problem slaps me around but God can deliver him can God deliver him uh-huh he can but that's a monkey why anyone you're bringing to God while you're dating already forgot to fix is your monkey I'm not saying they look like a monkey I'm not saying they behave like a monkey what I mean is this is that you're not waiting for God to bring someone to you that he's been working on you're bringing someone to God for God to work on and that is your monkey and that's why I just want to tell somebody here a prophetic word right now don't date monkeys monkey is someone who doesn't share your faith someone who doesn't share your values and someone who has a very chronic problem right now like addiction abuse problem flying anger problem demon possession demon oppression is addicted to drugs pornography masturbation parties like an animal cheats on you disrespects you belittles you and you're not even married that person is a monkey you gotta run from him like from a plague why because that is devil working and is bringing you a monkey God has someone else for you but before God brings someone to you devil's gonna offer someone to you first a monkey is somebody who is hot but they're not holy it's someone who you will seek to flirt so you can convert it's someone who you can well you know I heard this one time when one girl said all oh, the Christian boys they're so ugly they're so um, not fun and uh, they're so boring and they look like you know and I just they just all these like non-Christian boys they're just so exciting they're just like so amazing they're just like they just know how to treat a girl <laughs> problem is that and then there's the particular girls would say this or guys the same thing would apply to guys I'm gonna I'm gonna bring him to church I'm gonna win him to God I'm gonna get him saved then we're gonna get married and be happily ever after because I know some people in our church look I know that couple over there they the, 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 the girl was in their church and she went to the world she got a guy she got him saved and she got married and now you know they're doing great did you know that the Bible says for us to win the world not to date the world 
Did you know that the Bible says for us not to be friends with the world? To witness to the world? <laughs> not to go on a date with the world? Anytime you are gonna date somebody so you can convert them into their, your religion or into your faith, shame on you. And if you are here today and you're not a Christian and a Christian is dating you, drop them. Because let me tell you something about them, is while they're dating you, they're secretly praying for you. They're not interested just in you. They want to get you saved. They got, they got points they need to score with God. You're a project. That's not cool. Are you with me? This whole idea, well, but I know people, it worked. You know, my brother fell from a second story building. When he was young in the Ukraine, I saw that. My brother Andrzej, the guy who has long hair, right in front of my eyes, second story building, head down into concrete. I saw blood come out of his eyes, his nose, his ears. I saw blood come out of every part of his body that had an opening. We picked him up. He was unconscious. We thought he died. He had a, such a heavy concussion. He recovered. His hair is growing so fast now. I don't know if it's because he hit the head so bad, but his hair is like, you can see he's like, it's like very long hair. Now, that's a powerful testimony. Second story into the concrete, hair is growing fast. So we should all go today and jump from a second story building into the concrete and see how fast can our hair grow. Let's go do it. You always look at me like, Wait, are, are, are you a moron or something? What's wrong with you? His testimony is not your example. Are you with me? Monkey is somebody who doesn't share your value and faith. Monkey is somebody who's playing, who's, who you are praying for God to fix. Monkey is somebody you're dating out of desperation and out of impatience. And number three, we're going to come to prayer. God is preparing you for the person He is preparing for you. God is preparing you for the person He is preparing for you. So Adam comes to God. They've had a great relationship. Adam has had a job. Adam has um, named the animals. Adam was looking for a spouse. He couldn't find anyone and he refused to settle for an animal for God to fix. He comes to God and he says, God, I, you know, I can't find anybody, but God, could you, could you help me with that? And God says, yeah, I have a, this amazing thing that I want to uh, give you an, a solution for. And Adam's like, dude, let's do it. What is the Christian mingle ready to single or Christian single ready to mingle.com? Sign me up, Lord. And, and God gave him this, like, he puts him to sleep, gives like this Anastasia, an, an, uh, Anastasia. God actually gives him an Anastasia. He just puts him to sleep and while Adam was sleeping, I want you to see this. Adam is sleeping and you would think God is working on his wife. In fact, God was working on Adam, not on his wife. And while he was working on Adam, somehow his wife came along. See this deal where people say, I'm just waiting on God. God is working on somebody. Actually, the only God, the only way God's gonna bring someone that he's been working on is if while you're waiting he's working on you. God is preparing you for someone he's preparing for you. Somebody say amen. In Psalm 90 it says this is that our years on this earth are 70 years. 70 years is life on this earth and anything above 70 is bonus. So if you listen to your parents, if you were eating your broccolis, if you were not eating a lot of sugar, if you were not taking a lot of Red Bulls, God says, you know what, you're probably gonna live up to 80. But like if you were messing around really bad with your parents, you know, eating, not eating your green, uh, green vegetables and just drinking a lot of sugar and all this stuff, God's like 70 is gonna be the top. Now do, do the math, let's do the math. How many years are you as a teenager? 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. How many? Seven. How many? Seven. What is seven out of 70? Come on, let's, I know the school is over. <laughs> so seven out of seven is what? 10, what? 10%. Watch this. Your teenage years are the 10% of your life. Your teenage years are your tithe to God. God wants you to give your teenage years the same way as you give tithe. Completely to God. Your teenage years have to be given to God the same way your tithe is given to God. If you keep your teenage years for dating, fornicating, just partying and just for yourself, it's the same thing as you're taking your tithe and you're not giving it to God but you're going to watch Spider-Man. 
God wants us to take our tithe and to give it to him why because so that the rest of the 90% will be blessed God wants us to take our teenage years and give them 100% to God why so that the rest of the 60 or 70 years will be blessed by him can somebody say amen your teenage years are a tithe to God so watch this God comes to Adam and God puts him to sleep and while Adam is sleeping he's under uh, this thing God is working on him like a doctor I had two eye surgeries and in both of the times when I had eye surgery the doctor was not working on me until he put me to sleep when he put me to sleep he didn't kill me when he put me to sleep I was in a coma but I was knocked out I don't remember anything that was happening the only thing I remember is I woke up hours later it felt like an eternity I woke up hours later and I like I opened my eyes and I felt like something was different about me now it was not it was not the same thing and I found out that the surgery was over see when you're a teenager God wants to put you to a sexual sleep where you close your eyes and God starts working on you there are some things God will never be able to work on you until you're sexually asleep what does that mean sexually asleep? You stop looking for somebody to date. You stop looking for somebody to love you. You stop looking. As long as there is a teen attached to your age, God wants you to go to sleep. Another reason God wants you to sleep. Why do you sleep at night? Why do you rest at night? To recharge. Why? So when you wake up, why? So you can have energy for what? For the day. So when you wake up, you can have energy for? For the day. What if I would tell you, God wants you as a teenager to be sexually asleep. So when it's your time to get married, you can have energy for your marriage. What if I would tell you, God wants you to say all of your kisses and all of your hangouts and all of your roses and all of your ah oh, you're so sweet you're so fine you're so great what if I would tell you God wants you to save all of that and not throw that away but to say hey why don't you date your mate instead of date somebody in high school why don't you have your best dating romance and all of that in your marriage instead of having it in high school with people whose names you will never remember when you get married and then when you get married you and your spouse will be like mm, grumpy old not fun not exciting why but the days in high school the party time oh that was fun because you were awake at night and now you're sleeping during the day many marriages don't date couples they get married and their marriage is like an arrangement their marriage there's no fun there there's no excitement there there's no guys no longer open the doors they don't bring flowers there there's none of that you know where all of that exists in high school with people whose names you don't remember and the person you gave your heart to the person that you said I'm, I'm you are I'm that for me that person gets nothing why does that person gets nothing because the night time was supposed to be a time where you recharge for the day for your soulmate for the person you're gonna spend the rest of your life the problem is most of us during the night which is our teenage years we go party we go having fun and then when we get married we go oh, uh, uh, uh. oh that's you still married to you okay oh man my life is boring you're boring you're kind of ugly you gain some pounds our life sucks we don't we go on a date why we can't afford to and all this stuff and you look at you like man i did not marry for that why does that happen in our generation why is the old romantic couples are in high school in college and when they get married it's all dull predictable boring could it be that the marriage is supposed to have energy but we wasted it on teenage years with people we will never ever spend our life with. Rick Warren said this, he said if there will be more courting in our marriages, less of our marriages will be in courts. Can I challenge you with something right now? Some of you are here today, it's 10 p.m. in your life and I'm telling you go to sleep why because you have a day coming there's somebody God is bringing into your life and God wants you to be prepared for them God wants you to be like energized for them 
God wants you to have the best, the best, the best stuff. Not just before the wedding. After the wedding, continuing all until you are retired. God wants you to have that and God wants you to save not only your body. God wants you to postpone stuff for your marriage so that your marriage is fun. Your marriage is exciting. But many people here today, sad to say, your marriage will have to run on caffeine and Red Bull. Because right now you're awakened. One time I went to a summer camp, I'm not going to mention which youth group, and uh, they placed me with with the kids where the kids were sleeping the kids were sleeping above on the floor so I was on the first floor me and my wife and the kids were on the second floor at night we're going to sleep at 11 o'clock and I hear this <laughs> so I thought like an earthquake happened grabbed my wife's hand I was like honey are you okay she's like yeah I'm fine <laughs> again. and so I to the point it got so loud so bad and it's like midnight I got out of the bed and then I went to look for some volunteers or some people I was like hey guys could you figure out if there's like an a th like some nuclear weapon that's been dismantled upstairs because I'm like I'm dying over there below I feel like they're gonna break through the roof like the guy who was paralyzed in the Bible they broke him through I feel like that's exactly what's gonna happen turns out there were teenage boys who decided to turn bunk beds into soccer goals move the bunk beds and play soccer at midnight and somehow some way without lights bunk bed fell now I don't know how they survived that so I guess when that boom that's when the bunk bed fed fell they still continue to play soccer without lights I'm like I am amazed at the amount of energy they had but see nobody is like God you don't have energy for 24 hours you only have energy for 12 and next morning, do you know how I knew which guys play soccer? <laughs> it's the guys who struggle to pay attention. <laughs> and I knew right away, I'm like, those are the guys. And you know what? I guessed it. Not prophetically. I was like, yeah. were you guys the ones? I was like, do you know how I know that? Because you're yawning. And I always tell people this. The night is supposed to be a time not when you play soccer in your bedroom but when you sleep and rest so that during the day you can be excited you can be passionate with one spouse not love a thousand different women but I love the same woman a thousand different ways and for that to happen you gotta be rested and you gotta be recharged somebody say amen somebody say amen God wants you to get sexual sleep some of you here today it's not your time to get married it's not your time to date. When are you ready to date? When you don't need to. Secondly, we know when you're ready to date, when you're ready for marriage. So let me ask you a question. Within the next 12 months, are you ready for marriage? Is marriage an option within the next 12 months? Okay, most of you are going like this. You just answered if you're ready for dating. If you are dating without the intent of getting married, it's the same thing as going to the mall without money. You're either going to leave unsatisfied or you're going to take something that's not yours. Dating is not for fun. What's for fun is hiding, hiking badger. Dating is not for fun. What's for fun is going to life group. Dating is not for fun. What's for fun is to learn how to minister, learn how to start a business. That's fun. Learn how to fix a car, learn how to get a car, pay off the car, get a job. That is for fun. Get, a, get some friends. That's fun. We don't date for fun. That's involves somebody's heart and emotions. Dating has an intent and that intent has to lead to marriage. And if marriage is not an option, dating is not an option either. So I just want to encourage you, until that time, until dating becomes an option, can I give you one suggestion? Go to sleep. Well, how do you go to sleep? Oh, it's very simple. You turn off the distractions in your bed, right? You turn off the notifications on your phone. And secondly, you actually go to bed and then you close your eyes. That means you turn off the distractions around you. If somebody is distracting you, cut them off from your life. Go into bed, meaning you develop an intimacy with God and then you willfully purposely choose to close your eyes meaning you come to church for God not for him her and them that means you stop having personal relationships with someone who is not your spouse as though you're dating them as a young lady learn to talk to guys the same way as you would talk to guys if you would be married right now girls who go around talking to all the boys why because I'm single you're developing a habit that will still continue after you get married God doesn't want you to do that Bible says blessed is the man who finds a wife. It doesn't say blessed is the man who finds a woman. I mean she was acting like a wife before she was a wife. She wasn't talking to anything that moves. 
she was already keeping herself meaning she, she already had her guys uh, eyes closed same thing with guys that means snapchatting direct messaging you know sending all kinds of photos that are completely explicit having very explicit conversations spending one-on-one -on -one time on the top of the mountain let me prophesy and pray for you all that nonsense has to stop go to sleep Sancha go to sleep and what if right now you went to sleep and you realize you know what this good-looking guy woke you up he sends you a photo and he said he likes you and you realize you just woke up it's the same thing what you do if at three in the morning you wake up you know you look it's like you know it's three o'clock in the morning you say ah, I woke up I'm just gonna stay awake no 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 you say you know what I'm gonna go back to sleep if you woke up already maybe you had a sexual relationship maybe you were involved in emotionally and you realize you know it's not your time can I ask you right now something it's three o'clock in the morning you still have so much sleep to do there's a day that's waiting for you there's an awesome marriage there's an awesome husband there's an awesome wife there's an awesome destiny that's waiting you don't need to jeopardize it so you can live it on red bull go back to sleep until the day comes into your life and trust me it will it will it came into my life it will come into your life there will be that day I remember when one guy one of the guys that we married and he said Vlad this is crazy he's like I'm actually of age the person that I like is actually like right he says every time I like somebody was wrong everybody told me it was wrong and he says I, I thought that day will never come but now this is he's like I'm freaked out what do I do I was like enjoy it fool You've been praying for this. You've been wanting this. I'm like, you sacrifice for this. Enjoy it. I'm like, it's seven in the morning. The alarm has went up, bro. It's time to wake up. It's time to enjoy your life. My friend, if you're gonna sleep well, God's gonna wake you up well and you're gonna have a wonderful life. Your destiny is gonna be blessed by God. Your relations will be blessed by God. Your purity will be blessed by God. Come on somebody, put your hands together for Jesus Christ right now.